Hi, my name's Phil. I like talking about politics and in this video I'd like to discuss the latest Tory flapping and cell phones concerning the asylum crisis of their own making. As Deputy Party Chair Lee Anderson says that the government have failed, Robert Jenrick, the Immigration Minister, completely misses the point about how to deal with the issues properly. Ben Wallace, the Defence Minister, pretty much calls Sweller Braverman out for being an idiot. And the papers today are reporting that Rishi Sunak is supposedly trying to put pressure on Supreme Court judges with threats to leave the European Convention of Human Rights. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel. So when it comes to dealing with asylum in particular, the Tories are just making a political hot mess of the whole thing. For a start, they are, by their own metrics, failing badly on the issue. For them and the voters they're trying to attract, there are two key measures, the channel crossings and the accommodation needed for asylum seekers. Another rows blowing up this week in Kent regarding that. Uh, no, Essex. Essex. And Robert Jenrick, the immigration minister, who's desperately trying to lower his IQ enough to worm his way back into the cabinet, has said that dealing with the asylum backlog, it will not deal with the channel crossings issues. Like, they're, they're separate. But the thing is, the only people who are trying to link these two issues, channel crossings and asylum backlog, are the Tories, including Jenrick himself. In the same statement where he said, oh, nothing to do with each other. He then said, actually, if we reduce the backlog, that might encourage more channel crossings. Which is not only a nonsense, but it's like, but you're contradicting yourself. So now you're saying they are linked. Which is it? Are they linked or are they not linked? In actual fact, they're not linked. But when it comes to the backlog, you know, there are three serious consequences of government inaction. First, it means we're having to spend an increasing amount of public money on increasingly unfit accommodation for people. That is not in anyone's interest. It's not popular with significant group of people outside those who own hotels and have barges for hire. So it's not even helping the Tories electorally. Second, it means that genuinely illegal immigrants, people who have made an asylum claim, but it's, you know, it's spurious, they're not having their applications turned down and deported. There'd be no fuss from lawyers, lefty or otherwise, or the courts, but that's not happening. So actually illegal immigrants, as we would all understand the term, are remaining here because we're not processing the claims. And third, it means that we're failing to take advantage of the willing skills of genuine asylum seekers who are the vast majority of applicants, according to the government's own figures. You know, we have a severe labour shortage and processing claims would not only help fill those gaps in the workforce, it means we produce more, we get more taxes into the system, less money out of the system paying for accommodation for people more than happy to work. And the way to deal with all this is quite simple. You process claims quickly. Instead of reducing the number of officials who do this, which is what's been happening over the past few years, hence the backlog, you know, what you do is you hire more staff. It would even pay for itself in the savings made from accommodation and extra tax revenues raised. Complete no-brainer. But trying to say that there is a link between channel crossings and the backlog is a nonsense, even if Jenrick also says in the same statement there is no link. Oh, there isn't a link. Oh, there's a link. There's no link, but there's a link. You know, people come into this country, whether fleeing dangers in their own country, as the vast majority are, or even unscrupulous, illegal economic migrants, are not going to have the faintest idea about what's going on with our asylum system. You, how would they know that? Who would tell them? The people smugglers who want to make money from their desire to come to Britain. Oh yeah, pay me a load of money, I'll get you across there. But by the way, as soon as you get across, they're going to fly you to Rwanda or Ascension Island. That would be ridiculous. But the channel crossings are a completely separate issue. And the way that is dealt with is safe routes. People don't choose to pay for the services of people smugglers to put them in a dodgy boat. You know, if the UK sets up safe routes for asylum seekers, there would be no need for these dangerous channel crossings and there would be no market for the people smugglers. Leanderthal drew criticism this week by telling anyone not happy to live on the barges to F off back to France. When attacked for it, he insisted, oh, I'm not talking about asylum seekers, I'm talking about illegal migrants. But this is a nonsense. 100% of the people being sent to those barges are asylum seekers, 100% of them. They've seeked asylum, therefore they're asylum seekers. They've all claimed asylum. Simple enough to understand that even 30p Lee could understand it. Although, clearly not. And until their claims are protest, processed, they remain asylum seekers. Once it's protest, 
then it's one of two things. They're either illegal immigrants, in which case deport them, go ahead, or they're refugees and we've accepted them as refugees, in which case they can be allowed to work. But until that claim is processed, they are asylum seekers. But abusive language towards people trying to flee persecution wasn't the extent of Leanderthal's ham-fisted efforts. He also went on a GB News show, not his own, because there's no viewers for that, went on Nigel Farage's show to say that the situation was out of control and that his government had failed everyone. Naturally, he's trying to twist the situation to what he thinks is his own advantage. Uh, it's not clear what advantage he's trying to gain. He isn't necessarily the sharpest political strategist around, but if he thinks this is going to help him win his seat at the election, I mean, I'm afraid I'd, standing on a platform of we have failed you all is not really going to work. And if you want to give him any credit at all, you may imagine that this is him recognising that his seat's lost and he's throwing his own party under the bus in an effort to improve his own stature for future career grifting alongside Farage because his own show on GB News is not exactly getting off to a good start. So he either needs to revive his political or his broadcasting fortunes. He also said that the government have plans to fix it. He mentioned Rwanda, but that's just an expensive white elephant. Even if the moves weren't considered illegal, they make no economic sense. It means paying an absolute fortune to remove a tiny number of asylum seekers. They try to oh yeah, but it's a deterrent to everyone else. Yeah, but you're also trying to claim that the Rwanda is this great land of opportunity and the refugees are going to have a great time there. I mean, you know. and again, it just comes down to this. Who, come fleeing war or persecution, has any idea about... The Rwanda scheme's quite famous here and, you know, in lots of other advanced economies. It'll be in the news every now and then. I can't imagine it's top of the billing in the French or German news. But from war-torn countries, I don't think people are really knowing about it. So there is no deterrent aspect. You know, people fleeing to Britain haven't got the faintest ideas about the Tories' latest tricks. They don't discover that until they're here, at which point they're here. He also referred to the Illegal Migration Act, but all that does is actually increase the level of actual illegal migration because it stops the authorities from investigating, say, human trafficking. So we boost the slave trade in Britain. Nice one. In the Express today, the front page suggests that Rishi Sunak has said that if the Supreme Court blocks the Rwanda flights, he's going to pull Britain out of the European Convention of Human Rights. I mean, blimey, I was talking about his childishness yesterday. I mean, he won't, of course. He's got absolutely zero mandate for it. Also, there's an awful lot of other complications that the likes of the Express don't mention, like Northern Ireland. How does that work? It's like Brexit, isn't it? There's, a, there's an awkward dimension to any such plan related to Northern Ireland. And that's to say nothing of how our, how our, our, our allies, sorry, teeth, uh, would treat us around the world if we abandoned our commitment to human rights. Now, they know it's a non-starter. Rishi Sonak knows it's a non-starter. Putting it in the manifesto, maybe that's the plan. Won't help him win the election, of course. The best he can achieve with this plan is to try and take focus away from the economy and healthcare when the general election campaign formally begins, because that's what they're desperate to shift the, the, the conversation from. But Labour could just dismiss the idea as ridiculous and carry on talking about the economy, healthcare, and when it comes to it, environmental issues. The Conservatives think that they're onto a winner on their environmental policy areas. They're absolutely not. The Telegraph also ran. There was, it was on quite a few front pages today. The Telegraph, Telegraph ran with this plan to make the European Convention on Human Rights an election issue, saying a third of cabinet ministers wanted Sonak to do it. Another way of saying that is uh, that most of them don't. But of course, for that third of ministers, I mean, it's it, it should come as no surprise that some of them are as inept and desperate as he is. Remember, there are quite a few cabinet ministers who are not guaranteed to win their seats at the next election. Some of them are looking a bit ropey. So I can probably guess which third it is. Um, but yeah, it's like the majority still don't if it's only a third who do. Occurs to me it's effectively just a childish attempt to put pressure on the judges who will have the final say on the Rwanda scheme. It's basically saying, look, the they're not confident the Supreme Court will find in the government's favour. The Supreme Court has the final say because, you know, the last court case declared the flights unlawful. That was in the High Court. So now it's down to the Supreme Court. After that, there is no further appeal. Uh, I don't know when the case is going to be, by the way. So this is a way of saying, if you, if you don't if you don't back us, then we'll we'll just remove ourselves from the Europe. We'll remove all human rights laws in the country. 
I'm not really clear on why Supreme Court justices would be pressured into decisions on the basis of this threat, because Sunak can't possibly do it before the election and won't be in a position to do it afterwards. But just the idea of issuing a threat to put pressure on judges in public is appalling, even for Sunak. Braverman's also been agitating, of course. I mean, it's quite quite interesting. We've had multiple members of the, the cabinet and other ministers uh, all getting into the news on immigration and asylum issues this week. Where's the Home Secretary? Oh, no. Her plan at the start of the week was, oh, well, we might send asylum seekers to Ascension Island. Such an obvious non-starter that the Defence Department have said that they would resist the plan. In other words, stop being so bloody stupid. When the plan was floated before, because it's not the first time this has come up, it, it was during Pretty Patel's days, it was revealed it would cost a million pounds per asylum seeker. It's because it's thousands of miles away, in the middle of nowhere. It's not actually built up. It's basically a military place, and that's it. That's all it is. And it's like there's there's, there's nowhere to live, and the cost of food is massively expensive because it's miles away from anywhere. Oh, you, oh where's the nearest supermarket? It's about fifteen hundred miles in that direction. On no level does it make any sense. What seems to be happening here is that the Tories are just watching the polls and becoming more and more desperate to find their ULEZ for the general election. What we need is the thing, the thing, the thing that will allow us to win it, this issue that people will jump on and forget all about the cost of living crisis and all about the collapse of the NHS. What is this thing? Everything's a skip fire. So they're desperate for something where they can draw a distinction with Labour and appeal to voters. They're trying absolutely everything. Well, everything short of actually governing or listening to voters, of course. But there we are. Those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. I hope you found the video interesting. If you did, please click the like button. And if you'd like to support the channel further, the join button for memberships. And until next time, I'll see you later.